The origins of motion pictures, spanning from the early 1830s to the early 1910s, are rooted in fascinating optical phenomena, the persistence of vision, and the phi phenomenon. These remarkable optical effects are at the heart of creating the illusion of motion on the screen. The persistence of vision makes the human brain retain images projected onto the retina for a fraction of a second after they disappear from sight, while the phi phenomenon creates the illusion of movement when images are shown in rapid succession. When these phenomena are harnessed, it allows a sequence of still frames on a film strip to appear as continuous movement when projected at the appropriate speed. Traditionally, silent films were projected at 16 frames per second, while sound films utilized 24 frames per second. Before the event of photography, early optical devices capitalized on these phenomena. For example, the phenakistoscope developed around 1832, displayed successive phase drawings on a spinning disc, while the zoetrope, created in 1834, achieved the same effect within a rotating drum. In 1839, the French painter Louis-Jacques Man de Daguerre perfected the daguerreotopy, a positive photographic process. In the same year, English scientist William Henry Fox Talbot demonstrated a negative photographic process, which theoretically allowed unlimited positive prints from each negative. This innovation laid the foundation for replacing phase drawings with individually posed phase photographs, a popular practice in the early days of photography. Yet, true motion pictures could not come to life until live action could be captured spontaneously and simultaneously. This required a significant reduction in exposure time, which went from hours to as little as one thousandth of a second by 1870. The pioneering British-American photographer Edward Muybridge played a crucial role in this development. Employed by Governor Leland Stanford of California, who was keen on proving that running horses lift all four hooves off the ground at some point in their gallop, Muybridge conducted extensive experiments using multiple cameras to capture successive photographs of horses in motion. In 1877, he set up a battery of 12 cameras along a Sacramento racecourse, producing a moving picture of a galloping horse that confirmed Stamford's belief. The French physiologist Asian Jules Mary also contributed to series photography with his chronophotographic gun in 1882, which recorded 12 successive photographs per second. His primary objective was to study the rapid movement of birds in flight, capturing images on a rotating glass plate or paper roll film. Unlike Moodbridge, Mary focused on deconstructing movement rather than synthesizing it, limiting his experiments to high-speed series photography. These early pioneers, Moodbridge and Mary, engaged in scientific inquiry, pushing the boundaries of technology to analyze events that occurred too swiftly for human perception. Their work laid the foundation for the future of motion pictures. Later innovators would take their discoveries and apply them to the realm of human vision for profit. In 1887, Hannibal Goodwin, an Episcopalian minister in Newark, New Jersey, introduced celluloid roll film as a base for photographic emulsions. Within a year, this groundbreaking idea was adopted by the industrialist George Eastman, who began mass-producing celluloid roll film for still photography in Rochester, New York. This development was a turning point in the evolution of cinematography, as it provided the ideal flexible yet durable recording medium needed for capturing longer and more complex events. It took the ingenuity of William Kennedy Laurie Dixon, working in the West Orange, New Jersey, laboratories of the Edison Company in 1888, to combine the principles from Moobridge and Mary with celluloid strip film and create a viable motion picture camera. The birth of motion pictures was a result of the convergence of optical phenomena, advances in photography, and the relentless pursuit of capturing and reproducing motion. Pioneers like Edward Moobridge, Asian Jules Mary, and innovators such as George Eastman and William Kennedy Laurie Dixon 
played pivotal roles in transforming these concepts into a reality that would eventually become one of the most influential forms of art and entertainment in the world. Their dedication to scientific inquiry and technological innovation laid the foundation for the cinematic wonders we enjoy today. Edison, the inventor of the phonograph in 1877, sought to combine visual elements with the phonograph's audio experience. In 1887, he tasked his young laboratory assistant, Dixon, with creating a motion picture camera. Dixon incorporated the essential features of a motion picture camera and projection technology, resulting in the kinetograph, which initially imprinted celluloid film at around 40 frames per second. While inventors worldwide have been attempting to capture moving images, early machines by European inventors like Louis Le Prince and William Fries Green faced challenges, and their practicality remains unclear. Edison primarily focused on the kinetoscope, a peep show device where a continuous film loop played between an incandescent lamp and a shutter. Kinetoscopes were marketed commercially starting in 1894. In contrast, the Lumiere brothers found their inspiration during a kinetoscope exhibition in Paris to create a commercially viable projector. Their cinematograph, which operated as a camera, printer and projector, was first demonstrated in December 1895 and ran at 16 frames per second. The cinematography was more portable and influenced the type of films produced, emphasizing outdoor actualities. In the United States, Edison's kinetograph was followed by the Edison Vitascope in 1896, marking a significant advancement in American film exhibition. It also encouraged competitors like the American Mutoscope and Biograph Company, leading to the novelty period where projection devices took the spotlight. Around 1897, manufacturers began selling projectors and films to itinerant exhibitors separating exhibition from production and enabling exhibitors to shape film content. This marked the first directors of motion pictures, such as Edwin S. Porter. In the United States, this approach delayed the establishment of permanent film theatres, while Europe, particularly Britain, saw early leadership in film production and exhibition. Robert W. Paul in Britain contributed to early film development as did George Albert Smith and James Williamson, Brighton photographers who pioneered techniques like superimpositions and interpolated close-ups. At the turn of the 20th century, a significant shift occurred in how films were perceived. They transformed from animated photographs into a medium for narrative storytelling, largely driven by the work of George Nelius, a magician who ventured into filmmaking. When denied access to the Lumiere brothers' cinematograph, Meles acquired an animatograph projector in 1896 and began creating imaginative films. He employed visual tricks and incorporated storytelling into his work, which proved instrumental in influencing this change in the film industry. In the United States, Edwin S. Porter played a pivotal role in advancing narrative continuity in films. His journey from creating simple one-shot films to more complex narratives, exemplified by The Great Train Robbery, 1903, marked a significant milestone. This film is widely recognized as the first to achieve a seamless continuity of action, showcasing multiple separate shots of non-continuous, non-overlapping action, and featuring early examples of parallel editing. Around 1908, the film industry in the United States saw the emergence of approximately 20 motion picture production companies. However, these companies realized that their internal conflicts and the increasing influence of the distribution and exhibition sectors posed a threat to their control of the industry. In response, they formed the Motion Picture Patents Company, MPPC. In 1908, also known as The Trust, which aimed to oversee every aspect of the film industry. The MPPC introduced a licensing system to regulate royalties, limiting the use of patents to licensed equipment manufacturers, controlling film stock sales, 
and setting pricing and distribution standards. Despite its efforts to centralize control, the MPPC faced resistance from independent distributors and exhibitors. They organized themselves into associations, such as the National Independent Moving Picture Alliance, to come to the Trust's influence. The Motion Picture Distributing and Sales Company, established in 1910, served as an effective antitrust organization, eventually supporting 47 exchanges across 27 cities. To compete with the MPPC, independent filmmakers initially emulated their practices and product format, producing one-reel shorts. However, they later revolutionized the industry by adopting multiple real films as their primary product. This shift prompted the MPPC to embrace the one reel format, but hastened its eventual downfall. These changes in the film industry led to a significant transformation, marking a new era in cinema by the early 1910s.